Welcome to Let's Hear It. Let's Hear It is a podcast for and about the field of foundation and nonprofit communications, produced by its two co hosts, Eric Brown and Kirk Brown. No relation. Well said, Eric, and I'm Kirk. And I'm Eric. The podcast is sponsored by the Communications Network and the Lumina Foundation. We're talking to people about their work and what's happening in the field with the hopes of making this growing arena just a little bit more accessible to us all. You can find Let's Hear It on any podcast subscription platform. You can find us on Twitter at Let's Hear It Cast, and you can email us at hello at Let's Hear It Let us know if you have any thoughts about what you hear today, including people we should have on the show. And if you like the show, please, please, please rate us on Apple Podcasts so that more people can find us. So let's get on to the show. And welcome in. You've made it. You've done it. You've found us. It's Let's Hear It. We're here again in your ear. We're so glad to be with you. <laughs> Mr. Brown, here Kirk. we go again. So let's hear it. Kirk. Yes. You're just what I need. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let me say you're just what I need. Let me say it right back to you. You're just what I need. In fact, let's hear it is just what I need right now. <laughs> it's been just another challenging week. And hearing your ebullient aspect made my day. This is what I have to say to you, sir. And I say it in direct response to the interview we're about to hear that I would like you to set up for us in a moment. This is what I have to say to you and everybody who's listening to this podcast around the world. Forget the headlines. Forget what's in your social channels. Just keep doing what you're doing. Put one step in front of the other and keep doing the good work. That's the inspiring takeaway I get from what we're about to listen to today, Eric. It's just awesome. So if this is all your fault. You're an amazing human being. At night, I get on my knees (laughs) and I thank my lucky stars for... All of the wonderful things I have and and for you. <laughs> well, it's about time, you know, because here, here, <laughs> I knew it. So you came to me and said, let's do a podcast. And I said, nah, nobody's going to listen to it. And, and, and lo and behold, what happens? What happens? Wait a minute. Down the road? <laughs> I, I saw that in a movie. What was it called? Yeah. Um, Gaslight. <laughs> That's right. That's right. By the way, yeah. I don't want to get too far off topic here, yeah. but my my wife convinced me that I had seen Gaslight once, oh, and I knew that I hadn't. Oh, no. I just can't even. <laughs> I can't even. I can't even. I can have nightmares now. That's going to give me nightmares. She had me convinced. Oh, really? I saw Gaslight? Oh, man. Huh. Well, And then I saw it and went, oh, my God, yeah. what did she do? All right. So let's talk about what we're going to hear. Please, because this is kind of a scoop, I think. It's so many things, but it's kind of a scoop. So, uh, yeah, set this up. What are we about to listen to? It's scoopy. As you know, this week, and we're recording the week of the Communications Network Virtual Conference. This week is the Communications Network Virtual Conference. If you are signed up, lucky you, because Mm -hmm. it is going to be an amazing week of learning stuff and hearing from people and being inspired just like you inspire me every day, Kirk. <laughs> and and one of the people that we're going to hear from this week is Susan Vandergriff, who is the executive director of A Step Ahead Chattanooga, which this, this organization is the winner of the Clarence B. Jones Impact Award, yes. which is an award that is presented by the Communications Network each year to honor an organization that has created transformative communications campaigns in the social sector. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say two words about why this award, what this award means for our field. Once upon a time, getting a great communications award meant that you had, I mean, honestly, there were awards for the best annual report and I'm not (laughs) making this up. And now we are acknowledging that strategy and communications can can have a transformative effect on our society. Like, it's no surprise to, to folks who have been working in this business for a long time, but but this is really terrific. And I also would add that that Susan, her story is fabulous. She was a she was a banker for yes. seventeen years. Yes. Yes. And she got a job as a part time office manager (laughs) at an organization that was working to provide family planning to women in Appalachia who had no access and they provided it for free. 
And pretty soon she's the executive director and she's going to now be accepting the Clarence B. Jones Impact Award. It's just a wonderful, wonderful story. And Susan is a terrific person. And I thoroughly enjoyed speaking with her. So gracious to come on the podcast. Such a wonderful story. This is Susan Vandergriff from A Step Ahead Chattanooga on Let's Hear It. Let's listen and we'll come back and we'll talk after. Welcome to Let's Hear It. My guest today is Susan Vandergriff, who's the executive director of A Step Ahead Chattanooga, and she and her organization are the winners of the Clarence B. Jones Impact Award, which is an honor from the Communications Network that recognizes and celebrates the impact of transformative communications campaigns in the social sector. So A Step Ahead is the third winner of the Clarence B. Jones Award, and Susan is going to be giving a talk next week, Friday, September 25th at 1 p.m. Eastern. And you can tune in live if you sign up for Communications Network Virtual. And Susan, thank you so much for coming on to give us a sneak preview. We don't want you to give away all of your secrets, but a sneak preview about what you're going to be talking about and to talk about your great work. Susan, thanks so much for coming on the show. Yes, thank you, Eric, um, so much. I've been a listener for a while, so this is a real treat for me to get to be a guest today. So thank you. Whoa, really? That's exciting. That's it a- is. It is. I'm a big podcast listener. Yeah, this is great. That's right, because you have to drive over the hill. I do. I have a 40-minute commute over the mountain in a different time zone from where I live to get to the office. I- I'm a big podcast fan. Well, I'm. It's always exciting to speak to a listener, and so therefore, you know what we're going to be, how this is going to go. We're going to have a freewheeling conversation, and I'm I'm really excited to hear about how you ended up in this work because I know you didn't start out doing reproductive health, and right. and to just kind of get a sense of of what you're going to talk about next week. Yeah, yeah. So as you mentioned, I haven't always been in this line of work. You know, I didn't grow up thinking, you know, one day I'm going to help women prevent unplanned pregnancies. That was not on my radar at all. Um, And I actually didn't even really know that I was passionate about this work until I saw a job advertisement for a step ahead Chattanooga. I was a banker for 17 years and was going places in my career there, really enjoyed the work until I just started feeling that maybe there was a little something more um, for me to be doing and and really felt a call to go into nonprofit work. Wasn't sure exactly what that would look like, but I knew that I wanted to do something more meaningful and feel good about myself at the end of the day. So um, I went back to school as an adult student, got my master's degree in human services counseling and really thought that I would just get my foot in the door of a nonprofit probably doing some case management type work. And I was looking for a job and landed on a step ahead Chattanooga. And I almost kept scrolling because the position was for a part-time office manager, which was not what I was looking for at all. I was looking for a, for a full-time job. And I stopped and I read the mission about preventing unplanned pregnancies. And I'm like, well, that that's kind of cool. I've never really heard of organizations, you know, in in town doing that. And I've never heard of this particular organization. So I started doing my research and I just, it just resonated with me immediately. Um, I, my mom was a teen mom. She had my sister when she was only 15. I have numerous people in my family that have experienced teen and unplanned pregnancies. Uh, I myself personally had experienced infertility, and I could see both sides of women who wanted to have children and were able to, and women who, not that they didn't want to have children, but just the timing was off, and how unplanned pregnancies had really changed the trajectory of their lives. So it was so cool to hear about an organization that was actually doing something to prevent that. So um, I applied for the job, and was the part-time office manager for a very brief, <laughs> a very brief time. And um, I've now held every position in the organization <laughs> and I've been the executive director for the last year. So um, I've been with a step ahead five years now and, 
and love it. I was so fortunate to get to get in on the ground floor. A Step Ahead had only been around about a year when I came on board. So it's been really awesome to see and be part of, of how we've grown and all the women that we've been able to serve here in Chattanooga and the surrounding area. So if I understand what you do, you're providing long-term reversible birth control to any woman living in 11 Appalachian counties in Southeast Tennessee who wants one and it's free. Absolutely. Yeah. Our mission is we, it's very simple. We do two things. We provide information and we provide access and information is key because, you know, we can offer free effective birth control all day long, but if a woman isn't even familiar with those birth control methods, or she doesn't know what all her birth control options are. And if she doesn't even really understand how her body works, because she hasn't ever received comprehensive sexual health information or education, because we have an abstinence only policy here in Tennessee, then it starts with education. So we have to let people know how their bodies work, what their birth control options are, how they can prevent pregnancies, and then we make sure that they can get the most effective methods, which are IUDs, intrauterine devices, and the implant that goes in the arm. These are the most effective methods of birth control, but there's, they're also the most expensive, which makes them out of reach for a lot of women, especially women who are uninsured. So we're all about removing barriers to access. So yes, any woman who lives in our area who wants an IUD or implant, we will connect her with a medical provider and make sure that she gets it for free, regardless of her insurance status and regardless of her income. Now, you mentioned that you're in an abstinence-only state, and that means that it is a fairly retrograde thinking about how to prevent unplanned pregnancies. Yes. Yes, it is. So in Tennessee, actually, there's no mandate to actually teach um, sex education unless a county has a teen pregnancy problem. So once a county has a problem, then the state says, okay, we're going to mandate that you institute a family life curriculum. But that family life curriculum has to be abstinence focused. So, you know, abstinence until marriage is what um, is the norm. So even if kids are getting sex education, it's, it's not comprehensive by any means. And that must make it a bit of a challenge in that young people just don't have the information, as you say, they don't have the information that they need in order to make intelligent decisions. And the, the Jones Award is about communications. And I, I just like to hear about the ways that you have gone about educating young people, frankly, and I'm, I'm guessing their parents as well, mm -hmm. about how to prevent an unwanted pregnancy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, while we certainly want to prevent teen pregnancies, we, we want to prevent unplanned pregnancies for women of any age. And actually the highest percentage, the highest demographic of people who have unplanned pregnancies are actually single women in their 20s. So um, that's primarily who we serve, but we do serve women of all ages. And we educate people, men, women, teens, everyone of all ages. But yeah, it's really hard to go out and do education if we're not allowed to be in the public schools, for example. You know, we can't go to a classroom and give a presentation at, at all. So we do a lot of, of work and outreach on college campuses. That's a, a good demographic for us. We do a lot of community events, but something that, and I'll share more about this next week, but one thing that we did was we formed a few years ago what we called our community outreach team. And this is a group because we know and research tells us that women, men, everyone, they like to talk, especially about a sensitive subject like sex and birth control. They want to talk to a peer. They want to talk to someone that, you know, maybe their same age or, or 
ethnicity or looks like them, they're more comfortable with that. So we um, have had a very successful community outreach team where we have about 12 to 15 people of all ages. We have teenagers, we have college students, we have adult professionals who will go with us to community events, staff our booth, hand out literature, and they're trained to have conversations with people about this subject. So we've actually in the in the last five years that we've really been heavy in community outreach, we've had over 23,000 conversations with community members, um, all delivered by this very diverse community outreach team. I don't want you to get in trouble or anything like that, but the politics of this has to be challenging in a place like Tennessee. How are you dealing with folks who don't agree with you on on the probably won't agree with you on a, on the questions about abortion, but who whom you might be able to find common cause on on preventing pregnancies in the first place and thus the need for abortion? Are you able to kind of cross some kind of political divide? We are. And, and that's kind of the the secret um, to our excess to our success, excuse me, is and, and I'll talk more about this again next week, but finding common ground. We found that almost everyone sees the value in prevention. You know, even people who are, you know, both pro-life, pro-choice, conservative, liberal, no matter where you stand, most people can agree that no one wants a woman to be pregnant when she doesn't want to be. Because, you know, if we can prevent unplanned pregnancies, then we're preventing abortions. You know, we can prevent, you know, catching people upstream before they run into a crisis, before they're having to face a, a pregnancy that wasn't intended. Catching people then, almost everyone that resonates with, that prevention is, is better than, than having a, you know, having to deal with a crisis. Well, we're going to take a quick break and be back, and I want to talk more about storytelling because that's something that you guys are doing really, really well. So we're going to be back in just a second with Susan Vandergriff of A Step Ahead Chattanooga. You're listening to Let's Hear It, a podcast about foundation and nonprofit communications hosted by Kirk Brown and Eric Brown. Let's Hear It is sponsored by the Communications Network, which connects, gathers, and informs the field of leaders working in communications for good. Because foundations and nonprofits that communicate well are stronger, smarter, and vastly more effective. You can find Let's Hear It online at letshearitcast.com or on Twitter at Let's Hear It Cast. Thanks for listening, and now back to the show. Welcome back to Let's Hear It. My guest this week is Susan Vandergriff, the executive director of A Step Ahead Chattanooga, and the winner, her organization is the winner of the Clarence B. Jones Impact Award. And I'm, I'm really excited about talking about your storytelling work because like on your website, you have all these videos, you have a lot of videos of women and you talk, you talk about their lives and opportunity and, and you, sh you kind of show how women are, are advancing and their sense of optimism. And you don't really talk about, you don't talk about birth control. You don't, you know, you don't talk about abortion. You talk about women's lives. Can you, can you talk about how you have approached your communications, how you think about storytelling and how you have engaged with your various audiences to, to find the ways to tell stories that are most compelling to them? Yeah, absolutely. Well, for one, um, we, partner with, we're a lean organization, small staff, lean organization, but we have so many talented people that we work with and choosing the talented and the right graphic designer and a great videographer, a, a storyteller. I, I can't stress how key that is. Finding someone and all the people that we work with are as passionate about our mission as we are. And that, that helps so much you know, when people just really get it. And, you know, one thing, something that we just actually started a couple of years ago that really kind of helped us take off, you know, we were serving women, we had high client service numbers, but when we changed up our communication style, when we started really focusing on an empowerment theme, 
uh, you know, really started focusing about, you know, when women can choose if and when they want to get pregnant, when women can get pregnant on their terms. And we really started talking about that. It's all about a woman and, and her terms and when she's ready and what's right for her, that women can do anything. We had a whole campaign that actually just sort of formed around a table in our office when we were trying to come up with a, a slogan for a t-shirt and that brainstorming session with our staff and our graphic designer led us into our women can campaign and um we developed these great women can t-shirts i'm actually wearing mine today and that led into our women can video which you can see on our website that talks about how yeah, when women get to do things on their terms, like plan their pregnancies, then they can do anything, whether that's getting um, a step ahead in their education or in their careers, or sometimes for a lot of the women we serve, it's just helping their families get ahead. They may have two children and a, th a third child is not right for them right now. And being able to determine their own destiny in relation to family planning makes all the difference in the world. It's also really cool to see you win this national award for communications with, a, a as you say, a very small staff. You don't have to be uh, have a hundred person staff to come up with communications messages that connect with people and a communication strategy that advances your organization. H how do you think about communications planning and strategy in a, in a small, lean organization like yours? I think for one, and, and I hit on this a while ago, is having people on staff and, and people that you contract with that are passionate. Our former executive director and our founder, Rachel Schulson, who's, who's now on our board of directors, uh, she and I used to, when at one time there were just the two of us, so we were the staff. <laughs> and and before we made our first hire and then subsequent hires as we've grown, we, we used to talk about how the, sort of the litmus test is if they cry. If, if we have a staff member and we tell them a story about a woman who came into us and she wasn't using any birth control and she already had two children and now she's got free birth control and you tear up a little bit, then, then you belong on our team. <laughs> that <laughs> that's um, because it does it, it it takes real passion for this for this work and having that passion you know sparks the brainstorming and it sparks that creativeness and 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 being able to you know people can can hear it when you speak you know it comes across you know if it's not authentic it's not going to resonate well with people so yes we've been very fortunate to have very passionate people that we work with um, and two you know we we are small and we are lean but we have had some key foundation funders that have funded us specifically for advertising, for example, or specifically for outreach and, and having funds that we can really devote to communications and to messaging has has been essential. Well, you're preaching to the choir, that's for sure, having done communications my whole life and having had this sense that if a foundation really, really understands the value of communications for their grantees and funds it, then that money is pennies on the dollar in that, you know, you might spend a million dollars on your kind of program outreach or your kind of program work as a foundation and and chump change on communications. But the communications is the thing that unlocks all the other stuff. And it's so I, if, if there are folks listening, foundation people listening, uh, <laughs> fun communications. Yes. <laughs> there, there's a blanket statement. But as as you can see with your organization, it seems to me that communications has been, yeah, you are providing a service, but you are also the precursor to that service is to connect with people so that they come in the door so that they better understand about how their lives can be improved by this service that you fund. When you think about the, the ratio or the, the mix between the services that you provide and the communications activities that you do to engage those services, how does that, how do you think about that and how does it work? Well, just if we look sort of at 
we, we always ask anyone who calls us um, who's seeking birth control, of course, we always want to know, how did you hear about us? And in this line of work, actually, the majority of people that are calling us have heard about us and our services from a friend or family member, because women talk to women and, and they may have heard about us or heard our radio advertisement and they may tell their daughter or their sister or their spouse. So um, we do have a lot of people who've, who've heard about us word of mouth that call us, but it's so exciting too to hear that people hear us on the radio and when we have those those radio ads or they've seen a TV commercial or they've seen our billboard or our, our bus ad and you know that's pretty bold to you know we've got buses here in Chattanooga talking about birth control it you know it's not something that ha, ha, was really ever done here and in this community and even open talk about birth control until a step ahead came on the scene so we've really just by being present and and talking about it makes people think you know a lot of times uh, when I was doing community outreach I used to always start by my presentations by saying you know, how many of you have know someone, not necessarily yourself, but someone in your life, whether it's a family member, a neighbor, someone you went to school with, who got pregnant when they weren't planning to? And when I ask that question, you will see almost every hand in an audience go up whether it's 10 people or 100 people. And until it's really framed that way and people really start thinking about like, oh yeah, like sure I know someone who's had an unplanned pregnancy. And it's maybe it's not something that you're thinking about every day, but when you start realizing how it affects so many people that it, it just gets the wheels turning. So people start thinking about it in those terms. And then that's why I think our, our messages really resonate because they're, they're relative to lots of people. Do you have a favorite story? A story that you, your go-to story, and don't tell, if you're gonna tell it next week, don't tell me that story. <laughs> if, that, if that's the case, then tell me your second favorite story. But mm. you know, a client that you served, when, a moment when you knew that this was really working. Yeah, um, of course I have all kinds of stories, but I have um, one actually, and, and this video is is on our website. We've actually used this video as a television commercial as well. But uh, the people in our videos are are real people. Um, they're not they're not actors. And one is a is a client, and she has since become a volunteer and even a donor. So it's really cool when we have clients that really get involved because they're they're so appreciative of what we've we've done but this particular client um she called to schedule an appointment one day and she you know she asked right away and she told us her husband had just lost his job and they were new to town and they had three kids already and she was really looking for effective birth control but because her husband's job situation she didn't have insurance and, and she really wanted an IUD so we told her yes we can help and yes it's free and she asked multiple times is it, is it really free? You know, what's the catch? And uh, I know our staff member at the time assured her that yes, it was free and got her situated, got her connected to a, to a provider to make an appointment. And five minutes later, she calls back and she's like, but is it really free? And uh, we're like, yes, it's really free. And uh, the day of her appointment, she called back again. Okay. I just want to make sure, is it really free? And um uh, Again, she was so appreciative and just could not believe that this was something that um, that was offered here in our area that, yes, she became a volunteer. She's appeared in our video with her with one of her children and um, and, and she's just been a great supporter since then. So that's always um, nice to have that true friend of the of the organization. Um, but one one more that I always think about is one day I was I was doing a presentation to a group of sorority students and this was at a private university that sits up on one of the mountains uh, surrounding Chattanooga um, private school with a demographic that tends to to skew wealthy and very educated very smart young women that I was giving this presentation to and after the presentation I had about three of the girls come up to me afterwards and they said thank you so much much for that. They said, 
we were just talking like we had no idea that's why we had a period until you explained it. And I was just kind of shocked and I'm like, wow, here's extremely educated young women, intelligent from wealthy families, and they had never been taught how their body works and how their menstrual cycle works, much less about birth control options. And, and we see that every day. That's just one example of just sort of the level of lack of information plus misinformation that's out there when it comes to sexual health. Well, the work you're doing is so important, so valuable, and no wonder that you won the Clarence B. Jones Impact Award. I should also just mention that the award is sponsored by the Heinz Endowments, which is a foundation that we we really love, and and their uh, their CEO Grant Oliphant, who's been a guest on this show, is uh, is has been a generous sponsor of of the Impact Award. So thanks thanks to them, and thanks to you, Susan for your Thank work. You. Congratulations on your organizations winning this award. I'm looking forward to hearing from you next week. Susan Vandergriff, Executive Director of A Step Ahead Chattanooga. Thank you again so much. Yes. Thank you, Eric. Mr. Brown, you that got to fun. interview one of our listeners. You didn't even <laughs> say that in the setup. That Susan listens well, to Let's Hear It. And that was such a lovely moment in your conversation. Your utter shock and awe <laughs> that she's listening as she goes over the mountain. And, well, she has a long commute. Oh, that's just so can we <laughs> of the many things we need to thank Susan for in all of her work, we also have to say thank you for that, right? Thank you for listening to the podcast. That is Absolutely. so awesome. It's fun to know there's folks out there. Yeah, you know, we're we're we've made it to Appalachia, Kirk. <laughs> oh man. Well, in in a just about time. So here we are, Susan talking about all this work, a step ahead Chattanooga, her story. And, you know, it's funny, as you were as you were getting into things and she was describing that journey, and you ask her how she gets started, and she comes from banking, and then she goes back to school as a as an adult, you know, to learn a whole new set of skills. Yeah. We keep having these people on our podcast that just make me feel bad about how I'm spending my time. You know, it's just like well, these people are just doing so much amazingly cool stuff. It's just, <laughs> right? It's just so great, the work that she's doing. And uh, and then she starts telling the stories, and this is both at the beginning and the end of the interview, these stories about women and their education, the education they receive about their own bodies, their own lives, and these incredible gaps that Susan and her colleagues are identifying. And they're even the inability at times to be able to go into public schools I'm, we're listening to this and I just keep looking at the calendar thinking, wait a minute, 2020? Wait, 2020? It's <laughs> it's so incredible. I mean, what did you think as you guys are, as you're going through all of that with her? Well, it's true that we, we have a long way to go in certain places and in so many ways. Actually, I, I want to do a minor digression, which is that, so we're having this conversation, the, what, 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 what's today? The 21st yes, of September, 21st, Monday? Yes, that's right. Uh, and... And each week feels like it is. Did, did you ever see the movie Revenant? Uh, yeah, yes, with, I did. With Leonardo yes, DiCaprio, I did. in which something horrible happens to him, and and then it gets worse. Yeah. So right. he gets he gets mauled by a bear, and he's running away. And as he's running away, he falls off a cliff. Yeah. yeah. And and sometimes I feel like Leo DiCaprio, like we are all Leo DiCaprio in the Revenant, and then someone like Susan Vandergriff comes along who changes her life, remakes her, just remakes her life in a way that is dedicated to service to others, to support women, to give them a chance. And if you go to the a Step Ahead Chattanooga's website, the stories, as I mentioned to her, are about people. Mm -hmm. They're about people who are who have a chance that they might not have otherwise had. Mm -hmm. People getting an opportunity to build a career and a family and a family and a life that they would not have had if it weren't for people like Susan and organizations like A Step Ahead Chattanooga. And then that kind of pulls me out of my post-revenant Leo DiCaprio just got mauled by a bear and fell off a cliff funk. Yeah. And so uh, so that that really gives, it inspires me, it gives me hope because these are challenging times. But as you say in your very Midwestern enthusiastic <laughs> way, like you're, you, you're, you are also just charging 
straight ahead to try and and make things better. And that's that's why I think this is exciting. And just a, a reminder that Susan's talk will be Friday. Mm. I'm really bad on dates. Whatever Friday is, yeah. <laughs> 25th. 25th of September. So please tune in. You can you can tune in live at, at comnetworkvirtual.org if you are signed up for Comnet. If you're not, it may not be too late. I would just check it out. If you're getting this first thing Tuesday morning, you can maybe get in there, sneak in under the wire. If not, then you missed out. But if you are signed up, then absolutely listen to Susan's story because yeah, we got a little taste of it, but we didn't get the whole story on purpose. I didn't want to you know, right. steal thunder. But <laughs> she's just so great. And the work that she's doing is extraordinary. It is no accident that she, that her organization won the Clarence B. Jones Impact Award. And, uh, you know, that's that's all I get to say. Well, it's funny, you know, this uh, this backdrop of just this just hard year and just the real suffering and the despair, of course, that we're all experiencing. Um, and then someone like Susan steps in front of the mic and brings our attention to something that's been going on for year after year, decade after decade around women's health, women's choices, women's education and it really made me pause and think about that, you know, just the despair that you might have as a person who was wrestling with an unintended pregnancy or just trying to get basic information and not able to access that information and suddenly finding yourself in the front of a caring, professional, thoughtful, th thoughtful, thorough voice and this service that A Step Ahead Chattanooga is providing it was really inspiring. And um, I actually thought you did a good job, Eric, of not scooping the conference. You know, you were very kind. Oh, you. you were very kind and saying, you know, don't give me all your best stories. But <laughs> here, here's Susan, right? She describes that, um, that instance where, you know, she's talking to a woman and she's describing this free service, the, you know, the, 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 the free re reproductive health services they can provide. And the, and the woman just keeps asking, wait, is this for real? Is this for real? <laughs> Are you sure it's free? Well, and, and, and it just yeah. made me think, is this part of our work in this nonprofit and in, in, in progressive change space of we actually want to offer something that's almost too good to be true with the caveat that it's actually <laughs> true, right? It's almost, yeah. it, it's so yeah. much is that's the case. And then, um, the other piece about their journey with their own storytelling, and this is where I feel like we have our guests talking to each other, even though they're coming, you know, on these unconnected um, interviews and conversations. But she talks about their shift in their own messaging to more affirmative stories, and I, I would, I was like, <laughs> I was like jumping out of my chair. Is she Sing started my talking song. about that? I mean, how is yeah. that? How great is that? I loved that. I love that. Yeah, and and here's the thing. That organizations are building a culture of storytelling and narrative shift and communications, not about here's what we do and here's our programs and here's the, but here are the lives that we are connecting with and here's why it matters. Mm -hmm. And those stories are the ones that make you feel and that's how you communicate. And, it, it, you know, in the in the old days, we a lot of us would just say, like, here's what we do. <laughs> and and in some of these videos, they never say what they do yeah. because they don't need to. You're on their website. Yeah. You can figure that other stuff out. What yeah. you want to know is why does it matter? What good thing happens as a result? Who are the people whose lives are touched? And those are the stories that they're telling. And this is not, you know, this is not an organization with 99 comms people. The, right. It's a tiny, tiny little place. Yeah. And and they are it, it just goes to show. That you can you can win the Clarence B. Jones Impact Award with whatever it is for staff, if you understand the power of communications. Believe. So that I mean that's that's really exciting and cool. I think our the world is changing, our work is shifting, and I think that that's that's hugely hugely exciting. Be lean, be nimble, be close to the work, be willing to learn. I also like that back and forth you had about the level of commitment that staff members need to bring to the work and that yeah. note she knows that they're on to somebody if they can tell the story and it really moves that staff person in um in such an impactful way and you know it the other thing the other themes that we've had in the podcast that that made me think about and you've brought this up a lot Eric is this whole notion of seeing and what is it to be seen and it just seems like a step ahead Chattanooga and Susan and her team they are coming forward into these communities and just seeing women 
in such an appropriate and inspire way, inspiring way. And and even as a bystander to that, it's so inspiring to hear about, isn't it? I mean, it's just it's just yeah. it's such a combination of all the stuff that we've been talking about and hearing people talk to us about over this past year. It's really, really cool to see it on display. It, it absolutely is. And by the way, I'm here, I'm gonna take another little sidebar, which is that there's gonna be a film coming out very soon called The Antidote. It's a movie about kindness. Mm. It's about people who are being kind and organizations that are serving others without any thought for themselves. And it's really, really beautiful. I, I worked on it, but I, I just can't wait to talk to you about We're going to have the, the directors on the show pretty soon. But, but these are also stories that are positive, that are inspiring, that make you feel good about what it is to be a part of a community. And, and I'm just really excited about that too. So these, these, all of these stories are coming together. And I think we, if we get it right, we can shape our culture. I know we are running into a buzzsaw that life is, <laughs> it's almost binary mm. that it, we, we can go right or left. But uh, I, I, I do ho- hold, hold out some hope. And, and I, I do like talking about these stories because it's, what's, it's what keeps me going. So we just keep doing the work. So you can find A Step Ahead Chattanooga on Twitter at A Step Ahead Chat, C-H-A-T-T. You can find them on Facebook at A Step Ahead Chattanooga, spelled out. Um, you know, Susan is doing her own work. Uh, she's just written up today on the Chattanooga Moms blog, Mom on a Mission, Susan Vandergriff with the Step Ahead Chattanooga, a great article about all of their work. And then, of course, you can find them on their website and also on Instagram. What a treat. Um, Susan Vandergriff and your team at Step Ahead Chattanooga, congratulations. Well-deserved um, that you're the recipients of this very prestigious award in its third year. And just thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, Eric, any last words before we uh, before we 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 liberate people back to their lives? Ah, yeah, just a just a thanks to the Heinz Endowments that funded the Clarence B. Jones Impact Award. Uh, without them, we wouldn't be having this conversation. So so thanks to them as well. Susan Vandergrift, a step ahead, Chattanooga Clarence B. Jones Award recipients for 2020. Congratulations! Thank you for joining us on Let's Hear It. And that's it for this episode. Please let us know if you have any thoughts about what you heard today or people we should have on the show. And that includes yourself. We'd like to thank Maggie Brown, our intrepid production coordinator. John Ali, the tuneful and inspiring composer of our theme music. We'd also like to thank our sponsors, the Communications Network, the Lumina Foundation, and the Heinz Endowments. Thank you, thank you. And check out the Heinz Endowment, their terrific podcast, We Can Be. That's hosted by Grant Oliphant, and you can find it at heinz.org slash podcast. We would certainly like to thank today's guest, and of course, all of you, and thank you, Mr. Brown. <laughs> no, no, thank you, Mr. Brown. <laughs> Till next time. Let's hear it. <laughs>